Today we're going to have a look at what I think is a, uh, well, it's a very expensive pen. The Mont Blanc Patron of the Arts, Hadrian. Uh, it was uh, lent to me by Joost from Applebone Pennon. I'll be very careful not to drop this one. This is a large pen. It is very heavy. It has Egyptian basil on the... Um, um, basil? Ba ba basil? He, he's been... He's been basiled. That's when you season... So anyway. Um, Egyptian basil, I think, it sounds more natural to me in, in the, the pen body and cap. I'll talk about the symbolism of all of this stuff, uh, but I was wondering... Hadrian... Hadrian... Who is Hadrian again? So I thought maybe I should bring in a guest who can talk to you a little bit about uh, this scenario. So, here we go, without further ado, my good, dear old friend who's been gone for way too long. No one else, of course, then. Professor Dr. Tarquin Dagnar. <laughs> There you are. Uh, Professor Dr. Dr. Dagby here, you see? Uh, yes, and... Uh, <laughs> I'm, um, I'm still getting used to the idea that... Lord Windermere has left us. Anyway, let's not make this difficult. Um, uh, the, the Emperor Hadrian. What do we know about Hadrian? Well, Hadrian, of course, uh, 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 Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian, Antoninus, Pius, Marcus Aurelius, the last of the so-called good five emperors, or five good emperors, or emperors good five, or emperors five good. Uh, usually the, I think, five good emperors. Uh, five emperors who in a nutshell, were not mad as a snake, which applies to many of the other emperors that followed them. So, very interesting uh, that, that uh, Hadrian was chosen uh, for this patron of the arts. If I would have chosen, I would have probably chosen Marcus Aurelius. Uh, Hadrian had an interesting reputation, a bit of a duality there, where on the one hand he was indeed a very good emperor, but on the other hand he was also a little weird and known for some violent acts. So very interesting to choose that person as a patron of the arts, you know? I'm now waiting for the Attila the Hun pen, but sure, why not? <laughs> anyway, Hadrian did some interesting things as well. He, of course, built a wall in Scotland. He was uh, apparently an amateur uh, Mason or something. I don't know what, what the point of that was, but uh, that's, that's something he did. Uh, he also kind of restored the Pantheon in Rome, large building, if you've ever been there, rather hard to miss, <laughs> and uh, uh, very imposing. The, the, the interesting thing about the Pantheon, of course, is that the, the dome, if you were to take that and flip that around, you have a perfect globe, and there's many other architectural things that are very interesting, super thick walls to support the weight of that dome and the oculus in the center to provide light. Very, very interesting and definitely something you should read up on, but I won't bother you to death with that. Now, having said that, I think you have a bit of a grasp on the obvious, so to speak, and you now know who Hadrian was, and uh, uh, I think we can return to the regular program and the uh, scheduled review of said pen. Glad to see you again. Has been, I've missed you rather a lot in my sabbatical, you see? Anyway, uh, Professor Dr. Darkwood Egg will be out. Okay, so here we go with the Hadrian, which comes in this cardboard sleeve, just to protect the box. Then we have the box. This is the uh, head of a Medusa, which is a, uh, a theme they, they kind of went with for this pen. It's on the box. It's also on the uh, pen itself. Uh, the Medusa embellishment is um, um, from a very famous, if not the most famous, bust of Hadrian. It's, it's, it's on there. So that's kind of nice. There is also an extensive information package uh, which has a, a, a booklet. Here we have... I'm trying to... Okay, so here we go. This is the Mont Blanc Service Guide, which in itself is a short novel. Uh, then we have this Patron of the Arts uh, a booklet with a history on who Hadrian was, etc. Uh, and also a number in it, uh, signed and all. I'm trying to put that back in there because it is a limited edition. There are, okay, I'll do that off camera because I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, and then we have this box. It is a limited edition. There are 4,810 of these to commemorate the Mont Blanc. This box I absolutely love. I'm not really one for giant pen boxes, but the beautiful, warm, 
reddish brown color of this heavy box is really really nice okay here we have the Mont Blanc homage to Adrian right uh, uh, this is the 2634th of 4810 pens and then in here would be the pen in a very stiff uh, little baggy now let's look at the sorry about uh, at the pen uh, this is not the pen this is just there for size comparison and then here we have the Hadrian okay so let me zoom in a bit well as with a lot of these special edition Mont Blancs all kinds of stuff is tacked onto it bolted onto it etc etc so there is a lot to uh, show off here and talk about so first uh, first of all size comparison vis-a-vis -vis a uh, Lime Safari, you'll see it's a larger pen. It's also an incredibly heavy pen. Something I'll come back to. So, what do we see? Egyptian basalt for the cap and barrel, which lends it that weight, right? Why Egyptian? Well, because Hadrian had a, um, <clears throat> a sort of a fascination with the country of Egypt. And then we have on top here the finial, of course, we have the, the Mont Blanc white star which yes i know is the mont blanc summit and um, then we have this dome this dome is supposed to represent the pantheon which again i'm sorry <coughs> hadrian kind of uh, uh, restored and the pantheon also has as a building has columns in the, the the front porch which are carved from single blocks of stone from egypt uh, hence again this this Egyptian uh, connection so that's the, the the dome of the Pantheon if you if you're not familiar with the building look it up and you, you'll see exactly what what they try to do here uh, then we have a sort of winding uh, circular ruthenium decoration right there um, that that decoration uh, is um, uh, in reference to the uh, villa, a, a, a large villa, retirement villa that uh, Hadrian had uh, in, um, uh, I, sorry, I forgot the location, um, but that, that detail refers to that specific um, building. Then we have uh, the clip, uh, gold coated cap ring clip, uh, and uh, the, the uh, Let's let's start with this 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 the, the the cap ring the center band. So here you have a stylized Medusa, which, as I said, is from that famous bust of of Hadrian. And uh, then uh, we have here something that looks like a like a ferio or something. Uh, this is actually uh, a famous friend of Hadrian, uh, Antinous, and Antinous. Uh, actually, if I'm not mistaken, died in Egypt and Hadrian started pretty much sort of a cult to um, honor his, his dead friend, which is a little strange. Anyway, this is uh, Antinous's portrait as Osiris, uh, an Egyptian god. So that's, that's why there is sort of a, a pharaoh type uh, uh, picture on that, should you wonder, which I'm sure you absolutely were. Then we have the clip, uh, ripe wheat sheaf of uh, the uh, Eleusinian Mysteries, which was sort of a, a celebration the Romans had, which are based in Demeter, the, uh, uh, wasn't she the goddess of harvest? So I had to take a sip there. Um, so th th that's, th you have that uh, here, and then, uh, so then we go to the bottom. Here you again have that detail from his villa. You have another nice little pantheon dome. And the final detail I wanted to show you is the nib. And the nib um, actually has <coughs> the, the sort of the, the, the Hadrianic Phoenix on it uh, with a halo and with a laurel leaf. So a very interesting pen and nib design. Now the final thing to point out is that there is uh, something inscribed here. Uh, both on this ring and then it continues down here okay now if we if we um, uh, go through it let me see where it, where it started again uh, here adeptus okay so if we read it it says adeptus 
imperium ad priscum se statim morem instituit and now we need to continue here and what I did like let me see so you have instituit and then you continue uh, with the, 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 same, the things the writing is a bit closer together here there we go at down there so we have ended with instituit and then we continue with et tenendai per orbem terrarum uh, paci operam impendit I was turning that off screen wasn't I? I'm so sorry I was trying to read and trying to do this. So let's do this last bit yet again. Et tenendai per orbem terrarum paci operam impendit. Okay. On taking possession of the imperial power, Hadrian at once resumed the policy of the early emperors and devoted his attention to maintaining peace through the world. And as always, we can discuss whether maintaining peace is really that peaceful a solution, especially the way Hadrian did it. But let's leave that discussion for another time. Limited edition, 4,810 pens, and as you can see, there is a lot going on. It's a massive pen, it's large, it's also very heavy. Um, it really looks like it's supposed to post, but it actually does not post, which is not necessarily bad given how heavy it is to begin with. Um, nice section. And then you have the nib plastic feed, and it is actually a piston filled pen, so this part does turn. Um, <clears throat> I think that's kind of everything I have to tell you about this pen, which was a lot, and I apologize, but of course, we know that Montblanc puts a lot of detail in these kinds of pens, so that was to be expected. Now, let's write with it. Here we have the If you don't mind, I'm going to write down Hadrian as opposed to Patron of the Arts too, just to save some time. Um, this is a medium nib, and the <coughs> pardon me, the ink is just Waterman Blue. Uh, the reason is that I had to, I have to return this pen, and I don't want to put anything uh, uh, particularly aggressive in it. Writing, 18 karat nib has quite a bit of feedback not scratchy but this is not a buttery smooth nib fast writing the one thing I will say is that uh, it has that feedback but it doesn't skip it, it's, it's very pleasant to use because of that because it doesn't really uh, lead to any issues as you write. It's also a pretty nicely tuned nib that is, I would say, slightly on the wetter side of things, which is quite nice. Uh, line variation is always very careful. This is not a flex nib. It is not to be treated as such. Maybe a tiny bit of line variation can be squeezed out. Uh, then we have the reverse writing for those of you who enjoy such a thing. And it works, and it's uh, uh, it's not particularly scratchy that way. It's actually quite pleasant. So there you have it. Now there's a lot of things we need to discuss as to likes and dislikes of this pen. So let's get cracking. Okay, so what do I like? What do I not like about the Hadrian? Well. It's clearly, I, I think it is a beautiful pen. There is a lot of detail on it. There's a lot of eye for detail, which I think is something that Montblanc does really well on their special editions. It's very heavy, which might make it a little unpractical for some people. But yeah, a lot of nice detail. Now, I love that detail. And I love, I, I kind of enjoy the overall shape. I think they have managed to make something that is not gaudy, but that, that does look very interesting. Those, I would say, are things that I like about it. What about things I don't like so much about it? Well, there are two things that, that come to mind. One is the nib is nice, but in my mind it is nothing 
special. I can't say that this nib has blown me away. It is a pretty standard medium nib that writes like a medium nib, not excessively smooth, not excessively feedbacky. It's just a nib. So that is a shame in my mind. But I can't really complain about it because objectively speaking it writes, right? Which these days is a miracle in, in uh, pens uh, or expensive pens anyway. So it writes, no issues, no no problems with the, with the pen. I think the biggest issue is the price. Uh, with that this pen comes down to 2750 euros and without that it's 22.72 and 72 cents. But even that is a huge price. Now they are limited, but let's face it, 4,810 pens is not that limited. There are makers who do one of one or one of 10. So one of 4,810, yeah. I really don't know if that is that limited. There are, there's a lot of gold plating on it. There is a gold nib, there is that, that Egyptian uh, basalt, which, which is all uh, uh, very nice. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's an interesting pen, and if you have a particular fascination with Hadrian or, or Roman history, I could see how this would really appeal to you and how you might, might really enjoy it. And again, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just very, very expensive, which I think makes this a bit prohibitive. Having said that, as I said before, great detail, lots of things going on in this pen. The Latin inscription is nice, the Pantheon is nice, I've been in the Pantheon, the Pantheon is very very interesting from an architectural viewpoint. So it is cool that they put that in. Again, a lot of eye for detail, but... Serious money! So having said that, that's the Hadrian. Um, ave et salve, I hope this was useful and a uh, very kind thank you to Joost Appelboom for lending me this very expensive piece. I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye.